What is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. I've been having myself a lot of fun with these new Pokemon available with Pokemon Home. Hisuian Mons are amazing, and I got myself another really cool match. If you are new here, consider hitting that subscribe button. Less than half the people who watch these videos are subscribed, and it would help me out. And let's get into the match. So my opponent is actually going to end up leading off with the pointiest fish of all time. The Overquill comes out as I have a Mesprit. Now, I'm in danger of getting hit pretty hard with a nice little dark type attack. But I am pretty bulky, I know I can take at least one, and this thing's main objective is to just set up some screens to kind of try to just help out some of the mons I've got in the back. So I get up that reflect just because I'm in danger of physical attacks, and it does end up going for the crunch, which kind of hurts. But I'm thinking this thing, as a lead, probably wants to try to set up some type of hazards, whether it's spikes. Um, so I decide I can probably switch into Ursa Luna here. The good thing about hard switching into it is that I'm able to activate my Guts ability with that Flame Orb immediately. Uh, so that's exactly what I do. I'm bulky, plus behind the Reflect, I know that I can take attacks from this thing. And not a lot wants to deal with Ursa Luna right now. I swear to God, get your use in on Ursa Luna. This thing will probably be banned. But uh, it does end up going for the spikes there, which is nice. I come in for free, and I get that Flame Orb activated. So now, who wants to deal with the coked up bear? Definitely not my ass. I'm going to go for the facade here. Pretty much with that stab, guts boosted, insane base attack. Nothing can take that, of course. We know the story of Ursa Luna, but it's just so fun to use. So uh, they're actually going to end up switching into the Hatterene, basically just as death fodder. A nice little snack for the cocaine bear. It's, uh, it's working up an appetite over here, and we get ourselves a little hat lunch. So... That actually works as a death fodder switch in because now they get a revenge switch on something that can outspeed and hit me with some big damage. Um, and that in turns out to be the Inteleon. So this thing comes in, I'm actually, I have a decision to make whether I want to switch out and try to take an attack and save the bear for later, or I'm thinking I can actually take a snipe shot. So I figure, you know what, I'm going to stay in. I do actually live that with 37 HP and a facade does take care of the Inteleon. Now the reason why I opted to kind of use up Ursa Luna there was because Inteleon's a huge threat to my team. Uh, so just getting it taken care of is fine and Ursa Luna grabs himself another kill. So unfortunately I am slow and in comes the Cinderace who can easily uh, just finish me off here. But I'm happy seeing uh, the Inteleon go down because like I said my team he doesn't like that thing. So I let this thing finish me off with an Iron Head. It does turn into the Steel type here. Uh, so down goes the bear. Doesn't get the Rampage that we want but it's fine. I was able to at least poke some holes in the squad. Uh, and now I get a revenge switch into the Cinderace. So I decide potentially I could try to set up that boy bird is the word here. Look at the beauty of the shiny Braviary. So I, I plan on trying to set up some Calm Minds. Now there's a couple of Mons that they have in the back that can kind of stop this thing. But I'm thinking with the bulk from the Calm Minds plus Roost, I could have uh, a decent shot. So I go for that Calm Mind. They're actually just going to directly switch into Slime Shady, the, the Gudra, coming in with his big ass shell, shell tail. Uh, and I do get that plus one special attack and special defense. So I'm honestly feeling pretty good against this matchup. I don't know exactly what type of Gudra this is going to be. I know a lot of the time they're going to be extremely specially defensive. But even with neutral or not very effective attacks, I can start to build up some pretty good damage uh, with these combines. So I decided to go for another one. Feeling greedy. I get that clean plus two because I'm going to need all the help that I can get. But it turns out this thing actually goes for the Acid Spray. Now while that doesn't do a lot of damage... It gives me a harsh special defense drop, and that is not ideal. I do have the plus two uh, special attack, and I'm thinking it's resisted. It's not going to be able to do a lot, and if he starts to just whittle down that special defense, I should probably get out of here, and I do want to save uh, the Braviary. So I decide to kind of just stop the setup there and just go back into the Mesprit. I'm thinking I can maybe try to get Cleaver going if I can get some screens. So... There goes the Draco Meteor. Now, seeing the Draco Meteor, I probably should have stayed in. Honestly, I'm thinking looking back, probably a misplay switching out the Braviary there, but I just felt like it was too important to uh, to, to whittle down with that special defense drops and just not having a good time. So they're going to end up switching that thing out with that minus two special attack, and I decide to go for the Reflect because I am afraid of the physical attackers, especially you know with the young pointy pinhead over here. Uh, this thing can do some big damage. So I actually do outspeed, so I figure with that Light Clay, I'm going to get up both Reflect and light screen here to try to take advantage of that staying up um, and, and, and make my mons in the back, specifically Cleaver, a little extra bulky. It's also, it's important to note the reason why I did also switch out Hisuian Bravery was because I was also thinking seeing the Acid Spray was probably an Assault Vest set, so I wasn't going to be able to rack up too much damage. So the bird is safe in the back pocket, but now it's time to see if I can get this Cleaver going. So the idea with this Cleaver set is to take advantage of the item Metronome, 
which increases damage if you continually hit the same move, plus Fury Cutter, plus its ability is called Sharpness, which boosts cutting moves. So if I can get an agility up, boost my speed, and then just continually hit with Fury Cutter, I can actually rack up some pretty serious damage, even if it's resisted. Uh, so this thing goes for the crunch. I take it nicely because of that reflect, and I decide if I'm going to try this strategy, it's probably not going to finish off the game, but I can try to see uh, just what this thing's made of. I decide to go for that Terra bug. I commit the Terra, uh, mostly just because I want extra damage on this Fury Cutter. And you essentially need a few of these to start to rack up to do damage, but... I mean, I've got my agility up and I'm ready to do some shit. So I go for that Fury Cutter. Um, the first one is just minimal power, so it's still going to do over half. Um, and I actually get Poison Point activated, which is annoying. I should not, I should have known better. Don't touch the, the pointy urchin blowfish fucker. But I can take another attack, but with the amount of damage I've taken plus the poison and I haven't been able to rack up, I can only rack up two Fury Cutters. They have Mons in the back to resist and even Cleaver is not going to be able to do a whole lot, but... I at least decide I'm going to go for one more finish off the young pointy ballin, which is a pretty big threat out of the way. So that is fine. One more Fury Cutter uh, does do the job, and they have a few options to switch into this thing. However, I am faster than everything at this point, so I can either opt to do some pretty solid damage, or I actually have the ability to go ahead and switch to my Stone Axe move, uh, which actually is Stab. It also sets up Stealth Rock in the process. In comes the Gudra. Now I'm thinking, okay, resist the Fury Cutter. I've got pretty good damage on that. However, it's probably better utility for me at this point in the match to set up the Stealth Rock. So I'm thinking I should probably just go for that Stone Axe. I connect, set up the Stealth Rock in the process. I do go for that Axe. Does a decent bit of chunk of damage with the resist, but it doesn't. It actually doesn't set up the Stealth Rock, which I'm honestly kind of confused about. Maybe, like... The fact that this thing potentially has shell armor and it blocks critical hits, it, it doesn't set up the stealth rock. I don't know. I was under the impression <laughs> that Stone Axe set up the stealth rock if you just connect it. But uh, it didn't there. And I was like, do I have stealth rock set up already? I definitely don't. So uh, that was kind of a, kind of an oversight on my end, I suppose. But Gudra over here just, you know, causing some mayhem. But it does allow me a free switch into the Sneasler, who can go for the close combat, finish this thing off, and in the process drop my defense and special defense, activate my white herb item, which gets rid of those drops, uh, and then also uh, enables my unburden ability. So now my speed is doubled, I'm faster than everything on the field, uh, and I can hit pretty damn hard. Sneasler is essentially, once you get that close combat with that white herb, I'm set up, ready to do what I need to do. Uh, so in comes the Cinderace, and this kind of puts me in a weird spot, because without this thing having any stealth rock damage, I actually can't one-hit KO it with my close combat. It does like 97% to it. Uh, so I decide Sneasler is way too useful for me, and I basically have to kind of switch in as death fodder. I, I decide to go into the Braviary, which is unfortunate. I saved this thing, and now it just has the fate of coming in and taking a Pyro Ball to the face. So um, it was just kind of in my best interest to conserve the Sneasler. It's, it's definitely uh, one of my win conditions at this point in the match. Uh, which, playing from behind, you gotta try to try to make some plays. So this thing is gonna go for that Terra Fire. Gets the young candles on his head, uh, and a Pyro Ball is unfortunately gonna do uh, definitely enough for a 2 AK plus you know, he's speedy as hell. So Pyro Ball kicks a Soccer Ball on fire Soccer Ball right at my fucking face, which is honestly kind of rude, uh, and does a bunch of damage there. So um, it is gonna be able to outspeed and finish me off. However, I do have the Choice Scarf Hisuian Arcanine in the back, plus with the Sneasler, I've got good speed and some pretty good damage to try to make some shit happen. So, one more Pyro Ball does finish off the Braviary here, which is fine, because now their final Pokemon are going to be this Cinderace, plus the Great Tusk in the back, and I'm hoping with the two that I have left, I can try to be able to outspeed and do enough damage. So, here's the plan. I bring in former Alpha Boy. I got my head made of stone, ready to head smash some shit. But the problem with that is that Great Tusk is a great switch in to Hisuian Arcanine. So I'm actually going to predict them to go into the Great Tusk here and in turn switch into Sneasler, who has a way better matchup. I can get uh, hopefully enough damage with the Acrobatics so that Arcanine can finish it off. So that is the plan. I do make the switch here. Um, I go first, which reveals that I am faster than the Cinderace, which is great for the end game because then I can finish it with a head smash. Um, a Chew comes in, he says bless your ass, and he does actually end up making the switch into the Great Tusk. So the prediction works out well. Motherfucking John Cena comes in, and now I have myself uh, a nice little acrobatics to try to get as much damage as possible. This thing does activate its protosynthesis, gets that attack boost, 
Doesn't matter, any attack from this thing will kill me. But what I need to do is essentially get enough damage with this acrobatics and then Choice Scarf Hisuian Arcanine can finish it off for me. Acrobatics does do a huge chunk to this thing and then it finishes me off uh, with that Earthquake. But now I find myself in a spot where, okay, Arcanine needs to lock itself into Head Smash because I still need to be able to outspeed and finish off the Cinderace, um, which is unfortunate because if I could go for the Flare Blitz here, I can finish off uh, the Great Tusk, but I'm basically locked into Head Smash here, and I need just enough damage to finish this thing off and to win the game, barring a Head Smash miss. So I go for that Smash, and this Great Tusk is just a little bit too bulky. It doesn't do quite enough damage. It was honestly expected. I just need a little bit more from that Acrobatics, but you know, you hate to see it. They are going to finish me off, so the Great Tusk does do exactly what it needed to do, and that is going to be the end of the game. I thought that was a, r a really fun match. Uh, it didn't necessarily go my way, but I mean, that's it's how Pokemon goes. I, I definitely had some misplays, and it happens, but super fun match. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.